thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox or second take on the D3 Plus which just came from a company called Digibox. I have to mention that this is the YouTube friendly so if you want to watch the full version links going to be available in the bottom of this video and just follow along and I know you're going to like it. This box comes with 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB. Internal storage comes with OS 12. And on top of that, this will get you Wi-Fi 6. I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family. Make sure you click the notification icon, select all, in order to get notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click the click the like button. It really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. And here are all the components that are part of the box. It comes with this user manual, which has everything that we're going to cover in this video. It does come with a HDMI cable. Now it does come with a power adapter, which is five volt, two amps created for Canada and United States. Now it also comes with a remote. This is how the remote looks. Yes, it does have a little mic button. That means is this remote is not only going to be IR, which shows right over here, but it's also going to be Bluetooth. So that way the voice search will work. When you open the back, it takes two AAA batteries, which is not included in the box, but you can see that all the main features are available. But this is for the box. There's a little part for the LED, which is gonna blink. You have the menu button, you have settings, also navigation key with the okay in the middle. You can see the volume up and volume down, your mic button, your home button, return key and delete button, numeric buttons in the bottom. You also have the mute button and also the static mouse, which is gonna be in the bottom. Now, the big moment, which is the old box itself, sitting inside of little plastic so it doesn't get scratched up, but this is how it looks. I really like that, how they made it shiny and it is engraved and it's not going to be printed on, which is kinda, it is printed, but it's mixed. This is how the box really looks. I really like this little design that they have done. Hasn't seen this in a little bit to be like this. I really like how this is done. Now you can see that it has two antennas so it can help you out with your Wi-Fi, and they are really nice and ginormous. Going to the front part of it, you have a little LED so that way when you turn it on, it shows the time and also it has a little part for the IR sensor and you can see the rest. Now going on one side of it, you have a TF card reader for USB 2.0 ports. Going to the back, you have two antennas for the Wi-Fi and then you also have an IR extender, which will really work if you're going to use your IR, except that it's just going to be there for decoration. And also you have the AV port, so you can connect it to older type of TV. And then you have the Ethernet port, you have the HDMI connection, you also have the SPDIF connection, or in other words, it is optical audio connection, so you can connect it to your audio system. You have the power connection, which is five volt, two amps, and there's nothing here. When you look on the top, their logo is really nicely written, but when you go to the bottom part, you have holes for ventilation. Not all of them are visible. You can see some of them are been blocked by the actual PCBA, in this case, the motherboard. And then you have four little legs so it can sit on the table properly so it doesn't move. And it does move a little bit, so it's not a lot. But once you go back in the bottom, you also have a sticker that will tell you who made it, where it's made from, also what's the model number on this, the voltage that the electricity do take with this, just in case if you ever misplace the power. And also you have the MAC address and serial number in the bottom, which mine is covered right now. Let's go ahead and connect this and see what's going to be involved on the TV. Now to hook up the power for CEC purposes, we're going to connect the HDMI wire first and then the power. And then you can see the blue light in the front. That means it is turning on. So once you turn it on for a very first time, this is the first logo you should see. And then it goes to a little animation. Now to pair it on the TV, make sure that your remote do have batteries, which mine already does. As it indicates there to press the OK button and also the volume down button as usual, we will press those two right now. And there you go, once it start blinking, it should already connect you, which it did right there. And then what you need to do is just click on the right side, click next, and there you go, now you can set up your box. 
and this is their main launcher. I really like how everything has been set up on this. So number one, you can see their logo right on the top, and then you have the date and time, which in this case is correct, and then you have a bunch of icons on the top. Now starting from the left-hand side, you can see it says contact us, and you can go to your speed test, you can check it there. Also, you can go to help, just in case if you ever need it, self-starting management, and then if you wanna quick launch something as soon as you turn on the box, and then your Bluetooth. Also, you have clear cache or clear memory, so that way you can delete all the background apps that are running, and that way it just shuts down, not going to delete the apps. And then you have your networks, you can select and you can connect to your Wi-Fi, in this case it is connected via Wi-Fi, and then go into File Manager, and this way you can see what you have on your USBs, and Remote Control, yes, you can use your phone as Remote Control, we will show that in this video, and then more settings. So if you want to go there, you will be able to see all the settings. Something like if you want to change your background right now, what you have, but you have to make sure that you download some. Now going on the bottom, you have a bunch of apps, which we're not going to show right now, but once we go to it, we will be able to process. Now that's not the only thing. There is going to be some blur right on the bottom, which will be right around here. And this will bring your Mac address and this way you have access. And then if you scroll more down, you will be able to see other apps. Now by default, only first one will be listed, and then some of them is not going to be even shown the name right now. But you can see right at the bottom of it that these ones are the ones that we added, and then we downloaded more so that way we can play with this box. Now again, I want to mention that if you are going to watch this on a full review, it, it will be covered, don't worry, it will be there. If you're watching this on YouTube, again, links is available in the bottom, how are you going to be able to process that? We will do some benchmarking and number one thing that we're going to go is going to be YouTube. Now, as soon as you bring up your video, your regular quality is going to be 1080p, but you can change it to 4K by just settings and that's it. Takes a couple of seconds and you will get your picture perfectly. This is not it, let's just go a little bit geeky inside of it. Now as you can see, this is on 1080p, and you can see that there's a zero frame drop, and this is about 764 frames right now, but the resolution on this is on 4K, but on 24 frames per second. And if you go down a little bit, you can see the codecs that they're using is a VP9 and OPUS, which is really good. And again, the colors are very vibrant and looks very slick. So that's what we really wanted it to see if this box can play 4K on YouTube and get you proper picture without any kind of pauses. Now, the next thing we want to go to will be the Geekbench. Now we have already processed this and you can see that for single core we received 114 and for multi core we received 405 which is a really good number again running a OS 12 on this box itself. The next thing we're going to launch will be AIDA64. Now the best part about this is that it shows the name is called Blue Line and the device is TV, but the device name it says Google Pixel. But if you go down, you can see it says four gigabyte of lower power DDR4, which means it's really good. And then the total memory that has been used and the internal storage is 64 gigabyte, but you can see that right now, the available storage right now is 51.2. The rest of them has been taken care of by partition, also some recovery and some apps that we installed. So this way it will play around and work for you perfectly. One more thing I have to mention is it says extended storage. Yes, we have hooked up a 16 gigabyte with some videos on it so we can show you guys. And that's why you see it over here. And if you look in the bottom, the Bluetooth version on this one, do say that it is Bluetooth 5 with finally this app slowly start working. And that is really good. Now the next part is going to, now CPU on this, you can see that it says all winner and it is running H313 slash H616. So that means two chips together to make this very powerful. It is quad core processor running on Cortex A53 and it is on 1512 megahertz. It is a 64 bit ARM, but running on 32 bit right now because of the OS and the cores that are running and also sleeping. So you can see that it goes all the way to the maximum, goes back down. And the CPU utilization right now goes roughly about 18%, goes back down to seven. That's really good, by the way. It's really nice that they have paid attention. 
Now another part is that the native resolution on this box is 1080p, but it is using a GPU which is G31, which is a single core processor running on 60 hertz. It is landscape mode, and OpenGL is ES 3.2, which means is certain games on this will work very smoothly. Now going under network itself, you can see at the bottom it does not have six Wi-Fi six, but Wi-Fi five is supported. So once we go to speed test, we can find out more that how good this is going to connect. Now Android on this is Android 12, which is called Snow Cone, and the API level is 31. Under terminal, you can see they have left everything for us to check it out. So CPU is running nice and smooth, and that means it's not getting really hot. Same thing with DDR, which is the RAM, and also the GPU, which is the graphics card. And if you look at the bottom, the actual terminal is also really good. It's not really hot, which is really good. That's what we are looking for. Now when we go to Codex, there is a lot of Codex in this, and that's what everybody's asking for, to see what is involved in this and what is not involved in this. So you can see OPOS is there, RAW is there, video Codex that you're looking for, H.264, 63, and more, MPEG-4 is there, VP8 is there, and more. They're all going to be inside of it. So this is how this box has been put together. The next thing we want to go to will be some video playing. So the first video we're going to play is going to be the regular stock video that we have. Sound is perfect, also it shows the video perfectly, there's no pause to it. And we're not using VLC to play this, so this is the internal player with the box that plays this for us. And this file is another big, big file that we have, which is filmed by our camera a long time ago, it's almost now 8 years ago in this case, but this is the best part. You can see everything is really nicely. It's about seven years, I don't wanna make a mistake on this. You can see the map is really nicely done and there's no pauses. Any little single part that is going to pixelize will tell you that the box doesn't do a good job. In this case, it doesn't, it works. And you can see everything is so smooth and we're not using a third party app. This is an actual player from the actual box that plays this 4K video which is really good. This is our 4K and 10-bit video. Sound is perfect, everything is running perfectly. Let me just bring up the volume a little bit so you can tell that there's no pauses when we are processing. So this is another good video to play with to show you that everything works on it perfectly. And yes, you can see that we went to the actual file browser in order to play with this. But we're using our USB. So here, is a really cool thing. Now, if you look on the top, which I am pointing right now, it says remote control. Now, if you use your remote and you press OK on it, you will get this barcode. And if you have to scan it, it will tell you to download and install this app, which is called DigiPlay. So once you load it, once you open it, it will look for the box. Now, I only have one, so if I have to select it, there you go, now it's connecting. So it takes a couple of seconds and then you can go ahead and either AirPlay or you can also apps and you can use the mouse. So you can select it and automatically it just gives you a little pop up for a few seconds and then you will be able to play. So if I have to press back, it press back and you can see that, that I am able to come down and play with these apps very easily using my phone. So this way I do not have to really use the remote that came with it and I can use my phone to play with this box. Now for YouTube friendly, I have to mention that the apps that we're going to talk about now do require subscription. Something like Netflix, or in this case going to be Disney Plus, or even if you want to go through to install another app called Prime that is part of Amazon. You need to go to their website, something like Netflix.com or DisneyPlus.com or Amazon.com. It depends which country you're in. You need to get a subscription from them. Come here, launch this app, and then install and log in using your username and password that these companies provided for you. It is not something that is part of the box that you're going to get it for free. No. We really need to subscribe to these companies in order to get access to them. And then it will work for you. And I got to mention that Netflix is, go is going to be 480p. And then for your Disney Plus, it is going to be maximum of 1080p. 
and then for prime is 720p so this way you know that okay we're not going to have any kind of problems and it's going to work for you to mirror cast you have to go on the top and select more settings and then in here it says projection screen click on it and now it's looking for a connection but make sure that your box and also your phone is connected under same network so once you see it it says pixel 3 and that's what it says we're going to say start now and then it takes a couple of seconds and there you go so we have to select accept and i am using the static mouse that is part of the actual remote and here you go and there's my actual phone that has been mirrored and now easily i can switch and i can play with this box mirror casting to the tv so that way if i have to play anything easily i will be able to play so the next thing we're going to launch will be the speed test now we have already processed it a bunch of times so here you go the first thing that we have done is using landline remember that this box is only coming with 10 100 connection for the landline now when we click on it you can see that my download was 93.4 which is a really good number by the way because this is 10 100 and our upload was a little bit low which was 27.5 in this case i only got 2.4 because that it was running and you can see that it was keep going up and down right over here between 27 dot five and six and it came down to number two but i have to mention that the idle time was not that bad which is 24. i really like to see it a little bit lower than this now that was the first time when we did it again it went up a little bit which is really good so it's 94.2 and stayed steady it went down to almost like 91 but it went back to 94 which is a really good number when you look at it right over here now when we did the upload 29.3 which is not that bad but my idle time was one of my favorite because it's very low when we went to wi-fi remember that we are using wi-fi 6 these days so when you go to it this is my download which is 114 which is a lot better because it is a 5g so it should go a little bit higher but it's just because of the rush hour time and this internet is kind of shared even outside of the network because the, the way that isps are been provided in canada but here you go so i got 114 for our download and it was going a little bit up and down even over here it fell to 111 but went back to 114 and stayed steady and you can see for the upload it went up a little bit to almost 40 then it dropped down to almost 18 and it started picking up to almost 26 and stayed there but my idle time is not that bad now when for the last time when we tried it dropped a little bit on the download and you can see that it stayed on 111 and you can see the peaks and the drops all the way through but when we try to do the update the upload part it is a little bit lower than what we are expecting but my idle time is also not that bad now remember that every isp has its own little tricks and it depends where and part of country you are something like in the united states and how the isps are going to react towards these type of boxes and even your computer and phones so there are different things that you need to figure out and find there's a lot of things on the internet that i am sure that you're going to figure out and find and this was our take on the speed test all the links will be available in the bottom of this video except that this was our take i hope you guys like our video if you do like it click the click the like button subscribe button on the top comment in the bottom always remember to visit our own website which is xitex.info like us on facebook follow us on twitter instagram and other social networking places and thank you